Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Everyday Man Sports Show. I'm Average Joe here with... I'm Just Josh. All right, guys. We missed a week, but we're going to act like nothing ever happened. Let's kick it off. All right, guys. Mm -hmm. Josh Gordon gets suspended for the entire length of this year due to a positive test of marijuana. Is that fair? Is that justifiable? Uh, no, I mean, I don't see it fair at all. He's uh, a star wide receiver. He's going to be out for a whole year in his prime. I feel he's a victim in this. I mean... Just I just don't see this as being a fair fit for the crime. I mean, it's the rules, but this is just I something agree. that's got to be changed. He's a multiple offender, so they're going to hit it to you like they do in California. Three strikes, you're out. Um, but the thing is, Josh Gordon is in trouble for something that's legal in, in a couple states here in America now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to be as time progresses. Um, and, he, and he failed for one nanogram. Like That's literally like a, such a small percentage of marijuana. They actually test in the NFL uh, for... Five times the amount uh, that they do in MLB baseball, NASCAR, whatever. Right. It is a zero tolerance as far as the NFL goes. Uh, absolutely mm -hmm. zero tolerance. But one nanogram. I mean, it's such a small amount. He probably might have ate a couple too many poppy seeds. Right. Who knows? But, I mean, really, uh, the guy knows multiple offense, what, the what was going to come, what the charges were, what the punishment was. Um, so he should have, you know, got his ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. But it's too steep. It's too steep, and it's going to put the, the Browns back. He's not even going to be able to to be associated, affiliated with the Browns no. this whole year. He has to do stuff in CFL, but look at Ray Rice. He go punches his wife, and uh, he's going to get praise for, for coming up with, uh, uh, well, I'm a man. I'm going to come up and say I did what I did. Well, there's a video of you doing it, so you have to own up. Uh, it's nothing like what, what Josh Gordon's going through. No. Um, and where does this leave the Browns? Uh, yeah, I mean, this Where hurts. were the Browns anyways? The, yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, there, he was a reason to watch the Browns on top of Johnny Manziel, who's not even going to start start the season. So... I mean, it takes a lot of excitement out of him. Uh, the running game's going to falter. The, yeah. Everything's going to falter with that offense now. Um, and I don't think it gives a lot of chances for the starting quarterback to succeed either. So, I mean, oh, Well, Ohio's doing, doing okay. They're yeah, doing okay yeah. this year. They got, they got the Cavaliers and, and whatnot. So, let's, let's go on to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Show no love for Kevin Love. Oh, nice, no nice love. Nice wordplay. Nice wordplay. I just made that up <laughs> as we go along, too. No love. For love. Uh -huh. How you feel about that? Um, so the owner comes out and, and just uh, tears down all the weaknesses of Kevin Love. He said he's, how bad he is at oh, defense. He could be injury prone. Injury blah, prone. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's he, some negative stuff to come out with, with a guy who's done quite a bit the past few years for your franchise. I mean, it's just like sour beans or whatever you call it. I don't see why he's going to be negative, mainly because this. He sounds bitter. He sounds sour. Right. He's mad that Kevin Love left. Obviously, well, he you demanded to be gone. The thing is, is I th I would much rather have what he's sitting in his roster right now with Andrew Wiggins right. and Bennett and got the awesome, future. So awesome if anything, don't trade. be bitter, don't be sour, be happy. Don't even speak Love's name. Talk about the future and Andrew Wiggins and what's going to be and how excited you are and and let go of the past because it's the past and it's over with and there's not not a damn thing he could do about it. But I would much rather sit pretty with Andrew Wiggins. Love didn't want to be there. He's sitting a lot prettier this year than he was last year. Do you think Love will respond to these? Do, will you think defense will step up? Do you think he'll not be the third wheel? I, I mean, think, think he keeps that? his mouth shut um, because, I mean, he's, he's, the ball's in his court. He's just got to play this year out and do the best he can. Mm -hmm. They go to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, anything legit. All the, win, all the talk about can this big guy do it. Uh, he's never been to the playoffs and blah, blah, blah. Well, It'll happen because he's with LeBron James. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it is what it is. But, you know, Kevin Love, uh, I think he stays, you stay quiet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't make a move. Right. Uh, no checkmates yet. Wait wait until you can, your your performance says something. Yeah. All right. Bucks make a trade not too long ago. Like I said, we're a little far behind. But they trade Tim Wright and the fourth round draft pick for Logan Mankins from mm -hmm. the New England Patriots. Good trade? Uh, on paper, yeah, I think this is a great trade. Logan Mankins is one of the few law offensive linemen in the league that I know the name of yeah. before Multiple this trade even bowler. happened. I mean, he's a pro bowler. Uh, Tom Brady loved him. He, he's super upset that he's gone. Um, they made this well, he, trade. He, he was going to take a, a pay cut to ask him twice, and he refused. Right. So that's where it goes. I mean, Bill Belichick asks you to do something, you do it, because mm -hmm. he will, look, look what happened to Wes Welker. He will boot you out. There's, there's nobody too important. And don't, don't get it twisted. No Tom bigger. Brady yeah. isn't safe uh, if he is to buck heads with Bill Belichick, mm -hmm. especially being 38 and in the, in the dwindle of his career. Right. Um, yeah, nobody's safe. You do what Bill, Bel Bill Belichick asks you to do, or you're not going to wear a Patriot uniform. Right. But um, 
on the Bucks side of it, uh, I think they get a great deal. Um, a fourth rounder, what do you get? You might get a guy who makes the team. Uh, Tim Wright was a great tight end, but I think he was third on the depth chart. But something scares you about Bill Belichick, and I, I talked to, to we, we spoke about right. this. Right. Something tells you he's a diamond in the rough. He's a Gronkowski just waiting to bust out. Because if Belichick wants that guy and he goes out and gets him, and he's going to get rid of a Pro Bowler for it, it scares me. It scares me a little bit as a he's, Buccaneer fan um, for being from Tampa right. that Wright might turn out to be the next Gronkowski or Murder and Hernandez. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I think he he's highly a, doubtful. Highly doubtful. He's a great uh, receiving tight end. I think he will get, catch some touchdowns. Obviously Gronkowski, or he could take over for Gronkowski. He's no Gronkowski, but he's he can be. Uh, good. I mean, Belichick at this point is just a depth chart move. Gronkowski's been injury prone. They need to have mm -hmm. the depth chart there. They utilize the tight end position a lot, um, and they can really make anyone. Um, I think be uh, an excellent tight end. Right. I mean, Kendrell Tompkins and. Uh, and these guys from New England, they're nobody. You know what I'm saying? They're no names. And, and Bray's going to make them into somebody, a household name. Right. So, And the Bucks still considering Richie Incognito. That would add right. another addition, another Pro Bowl to their offensive line that is just horrific if you were watching the preseason. Is that a good move? Is that a, I mean, uh, his character? That's, man, that's what's I, a question. This is Does a he fit in right with Lovey Smith? Well, I think Lovey Smith is a great character guy uh, like Tony Dungy was. I mean, they don't bring in too many guys. That's going to bring down the character of the team or be critical have a critical media perception of the team he's uh so i, I see i think it's doubtful he makes it to, onto the team but if they were to get him he's a elite offensive lineman um i think he would definitely improve the team it's just well, you want to take the baggage they wouldn't they wouldn't be signing him to much it would be no promises right. no guarantees it would be basically like hey here's a tryout Mm -hmm. uh, here's It'd be a few, one year, few thousand yeah. dollars. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be minimum incognito. Uh, whatever, wherever he goes, this next uh, uh, next transaction he makes, as far as signing, it's going to be for virtually nothing. He needs to get his name and his foot into right. the door, and, and he'll he needs be on to, his best. Yeah, he'll be on his best behavior, yeah, do what yeah. he's got to do. But I, I say leave him out. I mean, this is a character building team. I've heard uh, people talk about McCoy as being the leader, and he's not a vocal, mean leader. He's not the one who's going to challenge incognito. So I, I don't think the dynamic. Of uh, of their roster, uh, if they had some hard head guys in there, if they had some Warren Saps of the world and Derek Brooks and all these other guys that smack him in the head and tell him to get in line, right, yeah. it'd be different. But there's no veteran leadership yeah, there. We're a young team ourselves, and they're still growing and building. I think it just adds more crap, more shit thrown to the wall. And Incognito's just I don't I don't yeah, think he, I I think think he works out. I th yeah, I don't think he'll make it. And it's the season starting, so I don't. I don't yeah, they would have made that move, I think, yeah. uh, already, and try to see what he could do at least preseason. Mm -hmm. um, so, what do you think? Speaking of going? that division the Bucks are in, uh, so this is the South, the NFC South, and I think the Saints, it's the Saints all the way. I mean, they're impressive. Last season, the Jimmy Graham's a beast, Drew Brees, I think he has a shot, shot and I guess you can put this on the board or whatever. Cool. He, he might have 6,000 passing yards this season. It could that's happen. insane. But he could. Darren Sproles, that's the only division. thing that they lose. Um, but, yeah, you're right. The Saints all the way. Um, I just don't see how they – I mean, it's like – I just don't see how they don't win this division. It's like yeah. a lock like it is with the Broncos or, or the Patriots. It, it's just – this is their division for the losing if they want to go out and lose it. But I, I don't see anyone stepping uh, yeah, in. I don't think it's close. Carolina has majorly uh, took, took steps step backwards. Down. Their receiving core is gone. Um, I mean, Brandon O'Fell's gone, Steve Smith's gone, so they're they're taking big steps back. The Falcons are s such a doubt. Who who could really put a put a put a dime on the Falcons? Yeah, that defense um, is weak, and, and then Julio Jones has still got to do his thing. It's all really up to how Julio Jones recovers and what, what he's going to do this year. Roddy White was injury prone all last year, right. um, and I mean no, the Tony Bucks. The, the Bucks just don't have a a, a quarterback. Um, I mean, McCown or Glennon, I don't think is going to be enough to to get over the hump. Not when you got good defenses like the Saints and the, and the Panthers. Um, I think they need a, a a more, you know, better quarterback, basically. Yeah, and they're still years, a year or two. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they got a good team. They're up and coming, and they're a couple pieces away from putting it together, but they're definitely not, not this year. Um, okay, what do you think about this over here? Um, so I got the Colts once again winning again. I, don't, I, I wish I could pick somebody else, uh, but this is a pretty weak division besides the Colts. Um, yeah, the AFC South. I mean, you got you got to go with the Indianapolis Colts. I mean, yeah. the Jaguars was just so horrific. The Texans mm -hmm. uh, have. I mean, they just lost Chris Johnson. I actually think that. Um, yeah, the Titans, I mean, uh, are the Titans just lost Chris Johnson. The Texans. Yeah. Uh, they still don't know about their quarterback situation. Um, so I just you know, like I said, 
I mean, this is another obvious one, the Indianapolis mm -hmm. Colts. Now we're going with the NFC East. And this is always a competitive division. Everyone's always like, this is the one that's the most up in the grabs. Yeah. yeah, and any one of these four teams could really take it this year. Right. It depends on uh, what pieces fall together for each so team. So I'll, I'll go with the Eagles this year. Uh, they just have that high-powered offense, and they've proven a lot. Nick Foles is becoming an elite quarterback, and I, t I got the Eagles. Uh, everyone else has a lot of questions. That for me, and I, I just the Giants have too many questions for me to bet uh, to, to to bet on. I mean, their running backs gone. I'm not even sure who they're going to start at running back at this point. Um, the Cowboys. I mean, look at their defense, yeah. and they got worse. Uh, oh, yeah. They got a lot worse, um, losing Ware and a, a lot of other guys. Uh, for me, it's the Redskins. Uh, it's a toss up between the the Eagles and the Redskins. Mm -hmm. But I mean, with Philly winning last year, a lot of these guys don't repeat at the divisions and all that. And I'm picking a lot of repeats. So I'm gonna have to go with the Redskins because uh, you know if the formula adds me right, uh, you know I think the Redskins will will will, will be prolific uh, this season. Um, RG three is coming back. They add another. Uh, they add Deshaun Jackson. I mean that's just that's a huge part of that receiving core. Yeah. And all these guys are young. Alfred Morris, uh, Fiar Garcon. They got they got a stack. They got a stack team. So. Yeah. And then we got the AFC. AFCs. All right, so this one is also one that, like, year in and year out. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, the it's the Patriots every year. I think the Dolphins will be improved. I think the Jets will be improved. The Bills are... Oh, well, now that something happened with Sammy Watkins, so, I mean, that's their only hope. Yeah. Um, E.J. Manuel hasn't quite panned out the way they need it to. Um, but the Jets make the most, um, you know, uh, you know improvements. acquisitions, improvements yeah. this year. I mean, adding Chris Johnson and, and Michael Vick for that QB security. If Geno Smith doesn't do what, what's expected... And, uh, um, yeah, they had Eric Decker at wide receiver. So, right. yeah, they, they didn't have an offense last year. They had